Oh man, my dust extraction system really sucks. No man, it really, really sucks. Hi folks, I'm Dan. Welcome to another adventure with Therapy Woodworks. This week we're discussing dust extraction. Dust extraction as it pertains to a lathe. And as you know, it really, really sucks to get good dust extraction from a lathe. So I come up with a little design. I designed this little system myself. And uh, I'm going to take you through the, the journey of the really sucky lathe dust extraction. The first issue I had to address was items falling off the rickety shelf over my head. That had to go. It was Christmas all over when my dust extraction system kit from Amazon showed up on my doorstep. I'll leave a link in the video description because it is way more cost effective to order a kit instead of individual pieces. I wanted to accomplish two goals with this dust extraction extension to the lathe. Obviously, good flowing dust extraction and the second being French cleat racking system for storage of seldom used inventory such as wood. With the French cleats built, I could set about installing piping and connectors. I then set about designing and creating a collection box of sorts to mount to the lathe. I decided to use 1 8 inch clear plexiglass as a medium because I like the clarity to allow as much light through as you are working on the lathe. I think it looks tidier than a wooden box and I really wanted to play with the plexi, which I have not done much of. For making bends in the plexi, I just used the edge of the bench and a heat gun to warm the material. I used a piece of wood to hold the heated malleable plexiglass in place as it cooled. This was kind of tedious. This is going to be the bottom section of the collection box, so I needed a 4 inch vacuum line attachment point. I cut a piece of the poly ducting that came in the kit to a 15 degree angle and drilled a 4 inch hole in the face of the collection box front. A regular hole saw worked okay, but it did tend to melt the plexi a bit and it would bind the hole saw pretty easy. You have to judge for yourself the appropriate balance between pressure and speed of the bit as there's definitely a sweet spot to prevent the melting. With the shape of the bottom of the catch box tray where I wanted it to be, I could trace the shape onto two more pieces of plexi to form the sides of the bottom tray. I could have attempted to make this all in one piece and fold it all into place, but this is going to be a one-off design and I find it easier to design on the fly than to try and CAD design the piece ahead of time. The bandsaw really makes short work of the cutting process. It was quite simple to freehand follow the lines transferred to the side pieces of the bottom tray portion of the catch box. I had to create an opening in the left side of the bottom section of the catch box to accommodate the motor of the lathe located under the bed. The motor is not exactly round so I laid the plexiglass part next to the motor and traced the shape of the end of the motor onto it. I like this kind of reference designing. I believe it leads to fewer cut mistakes. And because I wanted to use a multitude of tools to work with a plexi, just to see how they function, I used a scroll saw to cut a not quite round hole. It worked very well. Aha, fit like a glove. Well, pretty much. There was a lot of cutting marks in the plexiglass edges, so I wanted to clean them up to give it a professional look. I found that sanding the edges with 100 grit and then using a small butane torch would remelt the edges and make them completely smooth and clear, just like it was never cut.
Oh man, here we go. The glue up. You subscribers know how much of a glue piggy I am and how much I enjoy glue ups. Not. This CA glue really scares the bejesus out of me because I know I'm going to glue my body parts together. Okay, glue on the edges of the bit to glue up. Making sure I have the correct part to glue, I apply the accelerator. Being ever so careful to line the parts up, I started on one end and laid on the side piece. Notice the gloves so I don't glue my body bits. Yeah, that worked out pretty well. I like it. And there it is, the bottom tray all built and in place. The top section of the collector was cut and bent up in similar fashion to the bottom, except that I got smart and used a small propane torch to heat the plexi instead of the heat gun, which sped up the process significantly. For the top fine dust extraction, I needed to attach a two and a half inch connector, again cutting with a hole saw, and this time gluing on a modified elbow piece after cleaning up the hole with a knife and sandpaper. have it. In order to attach the bottom tray to the dust hood, I wanted to use quarter inch knobs to provide some adjustability. I cut two quarter inch slots in the dust hood on the bandsaw, which allowed the hood to be raised and lowered. And there you have it, the completed lathe dust and chip extraction collection box. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. It is very clean and appears to have a professional level of manufacturing process. How about that? It was a simple process to install on the lathe bench top. And connect up to the 4 inch and 2.5 and collection gates. Now let's see if my design actually works. So back in the previous project that I had, if you remember, I was working on Brent's bowl and I'll put a link to Brent's bowl, maybe somewhere. Anyways, I made an absolute mess of my shop. There was dust and chips and purple heart shavings everywhere. And it took me a whole day to clean it out. So I devised this system. I saw two potential issues. Number one was the, the big chips coming off of Purple Heart itself that were ending up on the floor and ending up in a pile here. So this four inch extraction system, which gets piped down underneath through the bench and up this tube is controlled by a gate right here. The other part of the problem was the actual fines coming off as I was sanding. So that's why I put a secondary system, a little two and a half inch pipe, which comes off of the top of my little tray that I built. The little tray that I built, and it's not all that wide, but I also made it movable. So anywhere where I'm working on the lathe, I can move this tray and so that it collects the optimum amount of dust. This system really sucks. The other thing I updated at the same time, which makes the system really, really suck very well right now, is that a lot of my old system was this crappy old tin stuff with duct tape that was half falling out. And I tell you, it had to have been leaking like a sieve because the extraction that I get from the most distal point of my system now is incredible. And I'm gonna demonstrate this. This is kind of cool. I hope, hope you can still hear me with the dust extraction system up and running. But I've just got the, the bottom port open now. And man, does it ever suck. And it's 
real fun watching the stuff go through the tube. Woohoo! It flies like an eagle. So I can also control the amount of suction I want to each port by closing these gates. So I can open both of them up and get all kinds of suction, or I can close them off. Ooh, depending upon what I'm doing. Man, I could do this all day long. And even with them both open, you get a really good amount of, of suction. So like I say, man, this system really sucks. The last thing I did was to go around and apply a light coat of clear silicone sealer just to ensure I have achieved the maximum vacuum throughout the entire system. So we're going to be putting this system to the test in, an up, in my next project in the upcoming video. This interesting piece of plum branch is going to end up as a, a special project. So it's up next, watch for it, and we'll really put this dust extraction system to the test. Mm -hmm.